NBA free agency was a wild ride, and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's talk about the winners of free agency. All that coming up. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation. And in this video, we're going to talk about winners from NBA free agency. Speaking of gratitude, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of... Before we jump into that. Yes. Thank you for checking us out here on YouTube. Those who are listening to us on YouTube or on the podcast, please like, subscribe, rate, review. Give us five stars. You think we deserve it? Go ahead and just give us five anyway. Gift it. Gift it. All right, Fugio. So, uh, <laughs> going back, back <laughs> to bring, gotta bring, gotta back to yeah, back to the NBA. Um, so we talked about the Lakers and their free agency moves and their roster overhaul. But obviously, in NBA free agency, there are multiple teams who look to upgrade their roster, make moves for whatever reason. So yes. at the yes. end of each free agency period, or after the one to two re- week rush is over, we are left with an understanding of who the biggest winners were and who the biggest losers were every in, time. In, every time in NBA free agency. So first, what I want to know, let's, let's go with the winners. You want to go with winners first or losers first? Um, I feel like we're winners, so we've yeah. got to go with the losers first and end with the winner. Well, no, 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 no. Winners. Winners first. Winners, winners first. All right, winners. Okay, so. Shake and bake. So what I, so what I did is I, I wrote down my top three, the, the three biggest winners. I went from three to two to one. Okay. Um, as far as that goes. So do you do you have yours? I do not, but I will go fair or unfair on yours and say okay. if that's fair or not. All right, fair or unfair. So three biggest winners in NBA free agency. My number three, I have the Lakers uh, because of not only the Russell Westbrook trade that I think ultimately will benefit this team dramatically. I think that the just this level, just the balls it took to have this complete overhaul of the roster and to reshape the roster this way, even though I think the roster is not as old as people think because you have Kendrick Nunn, who's young, THT, who's young, Young, Malik Monk, who's also young, and uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. Everybody else is over fifty. Yep, but that makes sense. But I think that reshaping the the roster, especially in a big part of the reason why I like this, is Kyle Kuzma. He post LeBron, he was just not going to work on this roster, and he hasn't worked on this roster. So it was time to move him. I think KCP, he was pretty solid, but he really wasn't a game changer He's for this team. He was a contributor, and Montrez Harrell, I don't know what happened to him. He, I guess it was a bad fit as well, but he did not look like six, six man, man of the year, year Montrez Harrell. Yeah, so he, so, didn't like six man of the year guy. Right. So they all get a fresh start going to Washington, but primarily getting Kyle Kuzma off the roster. I think that that really helps his team, especially in the crucial moments, because you replace him with the veteran. Most likely the veteran is going to make the better play. So for that reason, I say the Lakers are the, the third best winner, we'll say, of NBA free agency. I can give you that. And the one thing to add to what I like about what the Lakers did with this retooling, and this is kind of a testament to the greatness of LeBron, mm-hmm. is the fact that he's been on so many teams where they've literally retooled everything around them. Mm-hmm. Just a couple of players in, a, as the main, and then you just figure out everything else, and they seem to figure it out every time. Whereas most of your champions typically build from the franchise ground up. They make acquisitions mm-hmm. and trades put pieces together but they play together for a time like the only team that really has done that and won a championship without having time together like time time together Mm -hmm. was this year's milwaukee bucks Mm -hmm. uh and even think about with the phoenix suns adding chris paul they made it to the finals with the guy for the first time on the team first year on the team well i mean well the bucks kind of did that as well because this is drew holiday's first year that's what i'm saying i'm saying they trade they just they traded and added drew holiday yeah so this is like between them and the suns this is the Uh first time outside of a lebron made team that a team wasn't basically grown for three to four years together to win a championship so then this bodes well for la how you bring in you know this this big time free agent one of this big time trade of of Westbrook, yeah. Who of a point guard, basically a, a point guard who is a game changer, who has who has a really major impact on the game. And you saw how that worked for the previous two teams who did that. So maybe that can work the same way for the Lakers. Good point. All right, uh, number two, the Miami Heat. Um, in I the love what the Heat did. Get, getting I'm not gonna lie. getting Kyle Lowry. Um, obviously is huge for a number of reasons. It's not even just the fact that he can run this offense. It's the fact that he's tough, like Miami is. He's a leader. They didn't even need a leader. So then to have another leader outside of Jimmy Butler just probably makes this – it's going to make this one of the best-led teams in the NBA. He fits the Pat Perfect. Riley aesthetic. Perfect. Of a Perfect. And, and he takes charges, which I hate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a champion. He's already been where these guys are trying to go. Yep. Yeah, well, most of them because they also added P.J. Tucker, who – Whatever he does that doesn't show up on the stat box, I mean, outside yep. of just his toughness, his willingness to take on the team's best score, um, at some point he's going to help the team. Everybody yeah, especially in the Eastern Conference. Maybe he'll guard Giannis. That'll be interesting. 
um, as well as uh, Markeith Morris, who, not to be confused with Marcus Morris, who's still a Clipper, who somehow found a way to become a fantastic three-point shooter. Maybe Markeith Morris can give them something like that. Yeah. But with Bam Adebayo, with re-signing Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero, um, I think that they have their they have their core. They know who they are. This will be the third season that the majority of them have been together. So I think that this has to be looked at as one of the top three, top four teams in the East. And what happened to them last season by getting railroaded by the Milwaukee Bucks is not going to happen again this year. No, 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 no. I think that they're going to give Milwaukee the fits that they gave them two years ago. Last, last year was – this past season was a little different for the teams that were deep in the bubble. Uh-huh. I'm going to say that. Yeah. All right, so my number one team, the number one – the team who had the best free agency, I think, is – I'm totally curious. I think I know who you're going to say, though. Go ahead. Okay, I want to know. Who do you think I'm going to say? Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls. <laughs> By all right, so midseason trades, you get you get one all star, Nikola Vucevic, to go along with Zach Levine, who is emerging as well as a perennial all star. So then you add someone who can run the offense and can run a more faster pace offense, unlike what Chicago is used to, like Lonzo Ball. And then you bring in DeMar DeRozan, who's um, you know who can operate in the mid range. So you have so many different ways to score now, and you have four capable starters that each team has to respect at all times. Yeah, and then a lot of people were, were throwing shade at the DeRozan pickup because of him basically only shooting mid ranges and he can't really shoot threes. And I'm just like, no, nah, I think that's a good thing for them. I think that's a good thing for what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good mix. So I'm not. Gonna, I, I think, I think adding Lonzo Ball with Demar Derozan and even added, added Alex Caruso coming off the bench. Oh yes, yeah, right. I think that's a fantastic pickup to go uh, along defensively because I think mm-hmm. Caruso is really good as a team defender. I think that that's a good young core of players with the veteran in Derozan that could potentially lead them to the playoffs. They can make it to the playoffs probably for the first time in a few years. No, they're going to make the playoffs. They were, were they in the play-in tournament? Is that where they were? I can't quite recall. But I mean, not that it matters now because they definitely have enough in order to be, I mean, if I looked at the East right now, I mean, obviously the Nets are going to be there, the Bucks are going to be there, the Heat are going to be there, but that 4-5 spot, maybe Boston, they can push Boston, I think, for that 4-5 spot. Now, I cannot recall who the Bulls coach is. Who is their coach? Is it Tibbs? No, he's in New York. Who is their coach? I have no idea who their coach is. Billy Donovan. Bill. <laughs> That's why I don't remember who their <laughs> yeah, coach yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of one of those really okay. easy to forget. No. Uh-huh. So they didn't make the play in. They were the 11 seed. Maybe okay. because Zach Levine was in COVID protocols. Uh-huh. Or right, right, right. But um, no, I think that they'll push the Pacers out. And I don't think the Wizards are going to make the play in at all this year. Mm-hmm. So to be honest, I think that they'll, they'll ascend up there. there. And there may be a potential chance that they – push one of these other teams out of the top four, like the mm-hmm. Knicks or the Hawks or something. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, I forgot about the Hawks, too. God, the East is loaded. The East is... And that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying, like, right like going back to the Lakers, that's what I'm saying, like, for the first time in who knows how long, the East is way more loaded and is going to be way more of a murderer's row than the Western Conference is going to be in the playoffs. So, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. No, we'll talk about that, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so yeah, so Lakers three, Heat two, Bulls one. Honorable mention, uh, the Wizards. I do like what the Wizards did, especially getting Spencer Dinwiddie you get that haul from the Lakers and they believe at this point that that may be enough to keep Bradley Beal there he's still the focal point of that offense they're still not going to be they're not a great team they could be a pretty good team but I do like what they did uh, as well as the coach Wes Unsell who I'm very high on because of his defensive and offensive coaching ability and I do like the Pelicans move to get Jonas Valachunas because if you pair Valachunas with Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram you probably have the best front court in the NBA so I really like that move as well and there were a few other teams who I think made some good moves as well did you have somebody else another winner for free agency that I didn't mention Uh, not 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 really. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be truly honest. Um, the, the Knicks look like they're trying to retool, but they just cannot attract a star. And I just don't understand why they can't attract mm-hmm. like a big name star. They're 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 they're. The good thing for the Knicks is is that they're becoming competent. I forgot who mentioned it. I think it was Monica McNutt that mentioned it uh, mm-hmm. on, on SportsCenter or on ESPN at one point. I know who that is now. Uh, yeah, yeah, she, she's <laughs> she, really good. She had some summer league yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she and she. I think it was her that mentioned it, but uh, or at, and I think there's been a few people that said this. The whole point is is the Knicks just need to be competent, and they're mm-hmm. showing competence, mm-hmm. and that may actually attract players to want to go there. I mean, they got Evan Fournier to come there. Yeah. 
on a four year fat contract that I thought was a little bit overpriced, but at the same time, it's not bad. You're, you're going to overpay for a shooter. That's just today's NBA. That is true. So then him is and, true. and Kimball Walker, and I think Walker is there. He gives them leadership because if you saw him in the playoffs against the Hawks, they looked like they had no leadership. Yeah. Like they didn't, they didn't know exactly. There was no one to sort of rally the troops in a sense. And I think that Kimba, especially being a New York kid, he can be that leader that they've been missing, whether he's on the floor or not. Yep. Young pups or whatnot. Yep. So.